right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Unlaced Podcast, one that I've been waiting to do for a long time. Uh, we finally got uh, the dates and times sorted with the guys from Concave Football, Andrew Theoklatos, Michael Peterson. It's an absolute pleasure to have you both in here. Thank you. Um, I mean, first and foremost, thanks for uh, inviting us in to tell our story. Um, I suppose... How do we condense a 20 year journey into one hour, Jake? <laughs> Mate, there's a, there's a lot to talk about and I do want to give a bit of background to, I guess, the listeners just on, I guess, some of your roles across the company and the brand and just the history of how we, we know each other to, to go into. But, um, Michael Peterson is football ro- royalty, like Absolutely. just football royalty in this country, uh, football federation, Australia hall of fame. I didn't actually know that Mickey, but you've. You've played for the Socceroos over 30 times. You've won multiple NSL championships for South Melbourne as a player and coach. Um, and the only Australian player to ever be signed by Johan Cruyff. And for those that don't know who Johan Cruyff is, he is the man that created the mantra and the philosophy for Barcelona. So, um, you know, Mickey is a founder of the Concave brand along with with Andy and and is overseeing the boot function of the brand. So, Mickey, awesome to have you here, mate. Yeah, thanks, Jakey. Like Andrew, thanks for having us and looking forward to the, to the podcast. No worries. And, and Andy, you being a director and a co-founder of the brand, mate, it's, it's a pretty special space that you guys are in and I, I'm very inspired by you two. And every time I have convos with, with you, I fucking always get G'd up, man. Like oh, wow. every time I get on the phone to Mickey, I'm ready to run <laughs> through a wall. And then speaking to Andy, I'm like, you guys are just electric with what you're doing because you're just going hard at everything you do. But for just all the listeners who aren't aware of Concave, um, are you able to just provide a bit of background on how it all yeah, started? Where yeah, it absolutely. From? I think probably just one thing I definitely want to mention, obviously Michael Peterson and myself are founders. There's three of us that founded the comp- company. Andrew Neofitu can't be here today. Um, he's also one of the founders. Awesome. I just wanted to acknowledge um, him as well. Shout obviously, out Andrew. Obviously, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Absolutely. So basically uh, Concave, we're, we're, we're a disruptive football boot brand that's pretty much made up of a bunch of misfits, people who... <laughs> challenge a status quo and predominantly practice going against the grain. Like we just challenge it pretty much everything. And it's probably fair to say that's the DNA and essence of our brand. So in effect, we own disruptive technology, intellectual property that assists you when you strike a ball, when you kick a football, any type of code, football, AFL, obviously global football, yeah. league, uh, et cetera. And we've had our technology independently tested by two different universities, Deakin University and Monash University, to, to validate that our technology works and it's real. Right. So that's that's the essence of uh, how we're founded, as in what we're founded for and why we're doing what we're doing. Wow. Because ultimately it's something that's very real. It's real and, it, and essentially it creates a bigger sweet spot through plastics technology yeah. on the top of the foot. It's basically three millimetres of plastic or railing that runs down the instep of the foot. It's it's a simple, simple idea, but uh, as the time frames will show, Jake, <laughs> yeah. it's, taken, it's taken a, a long time to commercialise it and even perfect it. Yeah. So was that the was that sort of the technology and that idea came first before you started the brand, or did absolutely. you guys just get around a table and think let's let's create the sort of football brand that we're in now? Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, credit must go to the inventor, Alan Durand, um, a football one-eyed Collingwood. Magpie supporter, <laughs> Victoria Park. Okay. He watches his beloved Collingwood go down to, I think it was North Melbourne at the time. Severio Rocker, six straight behinds. Um, he basically missed the goal on six occasions. He's a big kick, Sav Rocker, too. He's a big kick, but uh, who would have known that the, the Concave journey would, uh, would, would be born from the missed kicking of Severio uh, Rocker? <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. So it's actually a good story. And, and then basically the inventor, he saw this happen. It cost him the game. He went home and he spoke to his father, who was a former aeronautical engineer. His dad used to design bombs. So he said, Dad, I just watched Sav Rocker pretty much cost us the game. Um, what was going on with his kicking? You know, the ball seemed to be going off on skewing off to the sides. <laughs> so his dad said, son, go to the fridge and get me an egg. Go to the cupboard and get me a teaspoon. I'll show you what's going on. So he grabs the egg and he says, well, the egg replicates the shape of a football. You can clearly see that. Yeah. And he said, the teaspoon, if you turn the teaspoon over to the convex side, so the opposite side to how you would use a teaspoon, yeah. um, you get that convex shape. And then he said, try and balance the egg on the convex shape. Surely enough, it's two convex shapes hitting each other and you can't balance it. 
So he said, what's going on is unless you hit the ball perfectly on the ridge of your foot, on your sweet spot, which normally runs about a centimetre by 10 centimetres on the ridge of the top part of your foot, unless you hit it perfectly there, the ball will skew off to the sides. So surely enough, he said, I want you to reverse the teaspoon to the concave shape, so the concave side. Yep. He grabs the egg and he places the egg and it naturally cups the radius of the egg. So it's grade one physics. You can't disprove this technology. I've heard Mickey plenty of times given a sales pitch <laughs> using the old uh, tea, uh, the soup bowl and how you grab, you know, you get yeah. soup out of the bowl. and Even to the point where basketballers, when they release the ball, it comes out of the concave of their hand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's actually quite... Crazy simple. Well, that's that's fascinating, and that's obviously a big part of what the Hence branding the is, logo. right? The logo, yeah, right? Yeah. So, for, for those that haven't seen it, we'll, we'll pop up it, pop up an image so you can have a look at so, it. But. So you can have a look. So yeah, in effect, we started off as an R and D company, wasted uh, many of years. Or, or <laughs> well, we, we put it this way, we weren't conver- commercially savvy, Jake. <laughs> so we thought we'd just we, flip it we, to we, Adidas with well, uh, we, we six figure. Yeah, we <laughs> we definitely struggled big time from that perspective. But I suppose what we lacked in brains, we had in balls, and 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 we obviously needed a lot of those balls to to navigate through this particular space, this such competitive uh, commercial sports retail space. So R and D company initially, and then basically the idea was, hey, let's offload or license our technology to one of the major brands, you know? Yeah. So one of the, you know, a very famous American brand with a swoosh sign uh, or the uh, the German, the 100-year-old German brand. So we presented um, yeah. our, our technology. Obviously, it wasn't refined back then, but the concept was true. So at this point, you're not trying we, to make your own brand. You're no, trying to pitch which, the absolutely. kind of style to yeah, another yeah. brand. Basically, wow. license out the technology and get gotcha. these multi-global companies to use their resource to perfect it and evolve it to make it commercial. But what we soon found out was that they were kind of like, hey, man, we spend tens of millions of dollars within our own innovative departments. Who are these Aussie farmers that tell us how to make a fucking football boot, right? <laughs> yeah, so, right. Okay. Fair call, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so basically, um, that in effect, uh, probably... I think that took up the first five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, to be fair, the Australian government uh, gave us... Uh, Supported us yeah. through, through various R&D grants, et cetera, over the journey and obviously private funding. But in effect, that forced us to kind of make our next move or decide what we're going to do. And I vividly remember, I mean... Mickey P and myself sitting in La Ronde. We're a bit despondent <laughs> <laughs> after the not a bit flat, a bit, a bit <laughs> broke and yeah. despondent. Yeah, I can uh, imagine, right? And then we just said, you know what, Andy, we'll just start our own brand. Yeah. That's amazing. We'll have a go. And Let's just have amazing. a crack. Have and, a go. And, and, it, we and go as ahead. you can imagine, there was resistance with even doing that within the group of guys that were involved with us. It was like, what are you on about? How are we going to do our own brand? We just said, no. We're well, going we, to had, go. we had some inspired sportsmen, ex-sportsmen in our own right. Yeah, which luckily enough, obviously on this journey, I think in a lot of ways you just attract what you are or the energy you put out there. We've been very lucky to first and foremost to be funded by some astute stakeholders, uh, philanthropists in a lot of ways, uh, the likes of a Julius Coleman. Um, uh, this guy built a, a school for underprivileged kids out in Doveton to give them wow. a private school education without paying the money. Uh, Andrew Bassett co-founder of seek.com yeah, amazing Kilda. mentors yeah. to be fair we're going, to, we're going to talk about some mentors a bit later on yeah but amazing mentors and then as mickey touched on two absolute greats the great ron barassi there's a wow. statue of the guy at the mcg i mean ron understood the concept 20 odd years ago he totally understood what it was about and put his name to it and then from a football perspective global perspective um and that's kind of a story in itself is the great Kenny Dalgleish, Liverpool, voted Liverpool's all-time greatest ever player. There's a stand named after him, the Dalgleish stand down at yeah. Anfield. So we're bloody buzzing or honoured to have these guys as advocates. That, that so saw these guys the are a part of the early early phase of the journey with support. Uh, uh, from absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. I mean, you can't do it any other way. I mean, you just need everyone to just Baby in. steps, Jakey, yeah. just keep. And, you know, you sit there and you go, how can you not find inspiration from some of these guys? Like, yeah. They're, they're champions in their own right. Sometimes well, I'd find myself on the phone going, how the fuck am I talking to Kenny Dalgleish? And he's yeah. having a back and forth conversation about what we're doing and this and that. I'm like, whoa. And well, you invited us to <laughs> Melwood, their training facility, yeah. uh, to actually test the Conco boot with his son himself at the time, could have a kick. And then we went off to the Liverpool youth team and kitted out all the players with a very rough prototype, yeah. but he wanted to see for himself how this thing functioned. And at the end of an hour session – 
uh, after watching the Liverpool youth team, he said there's no way a normal boot can can uh, produce what these boys were churning out consistently. You know, I remember Paul Tromboli and myself putting on the session. I think, Andy, you were chasing the ball. But <laughs> the, 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 I was a ball boy back no, then. No, no, no. Hey, we put on all kinds taste. of hats, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. At Con Game, we wear every, every We get hat. the drink bottles. We do everything, we, mate. We do the whole lot, mate. That's, but that's, that's the beautiful thing. That's part of, part of why I'm fascinated by your business because it, it is a – uh, I guess an area in the sporting world that's filled with sharks and you guys have come in. You've got to be a little bit crazy to do what you do to come into this space. And I think the timeline you're talking about where you're probably thinking of starting a boot from a concave perspective would have been over 15, 15 even it, 20 years ago, right? Absolutely, yeah. correct. So you guys have been on this journey for a long time. Look, you find out, Jakey, I, th- I think if we're going to d- uh, draw analogies, say a sportsman who ends up becoming a professional, they've spent the best part of 15 years years as a junior working their way up to their peak. Um, we, we've spoken other technologies and from idea, concept to commercial reality, it, it tends to be around that time. So yeah. it might sound a lot and yet, but it's the journey and if you love it, you almost, time becomes irrelevant. You just yeah. put one step in front of the other and away you go and, you know, that that's how it, that's how the best way to describe it. That's it's yeah it's it's amazing for me. Was there any point in the early stages where you sort of got that that I guess kick of wind to really sort of move forward? And you thought instead of we're we're a bit of a, a starting block here and there's a sinking sort of ship at times because we're going through this journey to try and get bigger. Was there anything that guy gave you guys a bit of a push to be like you know what we're we're going to be on a really good path here to do something special? I, I would say that we've had signposts all along the way, even through the R and D. Phases. I mean, I've got a double hip replacement, a knee replacement. Some think it was my career. It was actually testing, <laughs> doing a lot of testing to financial people. Yeah. But, you know, when they see it for themselves, you go, oh, yeah, there's a savvy businessman who actually gets the idea. Uh, then you move on. And then obviously the likes of Ron Barassi uh, seeing the boot, then getting his people in to, to have a look at it. So just continuously, even through the hard times, and it's always the financial pressure, to be fair, that, that yeah. kind of squeezes you. But I think, Andy, it's fair to say we've had signposts that have kept Absolutely. us in good stead. When I first got introduced to the brand through Mickey, it was like you, you kind of mentioned from a brand perspective, but also just plays that you just naturally align to is the ones that are a little bit different, the ones that, that don't mind the pressure, the ones that like to stand out but are, are a little bit more unique. And I think that's reflective in the way that you've approached it I guess, an industry filled with sharks. Where did that sort of, I guess, branding or perspective come from for you guys? Yeah, I suppose against the grain, basically, in essence, having something on top of your boot that's not conventional is straight off the bat, it's against the grain, as in yeah. we're doing the opposite. So everything we do stems from that. Even our brand positioning, I always use the analogy, I suppose, when I present um, that if Nike or Adidas were a music genre, yeah. they'd be in the pop music category that ain't us. Like we're not Nike. We're not Addy. Obviously we know that we thoroughly respect them, but we're sort of creating our own paths. We'd be more of a, a genre of maybe hip hop before it was so commercial 20 years ago or indie sort of under the radar sort of a genre. Um, kind of, I suppose, a demographic or player that appeals to our brand is someone who likes to be their own person, like their own man. Mm. Uh, someone who, who, Ultimately, he doesn't really follow as such. He's very comfortable within his own skin. Um, so we kind of got two sort of demographics. We've got the guy that likes to be different straight off the bat. There's yeah. always one guy in the change room. Goes, Mate, I need those fluoro boots. I need the colors on it. I need the whole lot. Yeah. Then we've got the other demographic, the guy that he's the ultimate pro. This is a type of guy um, that likes to take everything to the nth degree to fine tune his game. He's the aspiring guy to search for something that's quite different out there that can help benefit his game. I suppose the thinker or captain of a team, someone like that. So we get pretty much those two types of players in general, which is still Uh, fantastic coverage for us. I think, Jakey, you can relate to your professional career. A change room can actually be – a professional change room can be an insecure place. You walk in, you're trying to get a game. It's not easy. The boys are – can, can be a little bit tough on you. Yeah. Uh, to actually walk in with a product like ours, we, we've noticed that. Yeah. In the that earlier days in particular. In when our prototyping, yeah. you know, they, they kind of dismissed you, yeah. which was fair enough. Mind you, Jake, the first prototypes literally had a dish on top of the boot. Like it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was <laughs> hey, exaggerated. It was like, you, you couldn't miss, mate. You, yeah, you, yeah. you were striking that ball. So it was yeah. very exaggerated. But people will say there's 3% 
of of people that are early adopters and and have time for new stuff. Hence why everything evolves. Yeah. But yeah. we can certainly confirm it's been a challenge. Yeah. And the and the, the people that we have attracted have definitely been their own own men. Yeah, and they're and the top, girls. they're the type of guys that force change ultimately. Yeah. The so, guys are not are comfortable. So did you take early feedback from some of the players that were work? Because I mean the boot I, I've been wearing the boot. For for those that know me, they always they always go, oh, Jake's always wearing concave. Okay. But I've been wearing the boot for probably four or five years now. And the boot that I wore four or five years ago, the feeling to the one now is slightly different. But, I mean, the one now is like a sock. Mm. It's beautiful. So, and, so yeah. I imagine it did, that that didn't happen overnight, right? No, no, no. no, no, no we no, did take didn't. feedback. Andy, <laughs> Andy's built a team and I'm probably – Best let Andy explain the team you put together. Yeah, I mean, first the development. And, first and foremost, all the, the the essence or the the core of the intel we get is stemmed from Mickey P. I mean, that's we didn't touch on it earlier, and we probably should have. Mickey P. was known as a ball player, you know, sitting in the midfield, directing traffic, gorgeous knock, to watch, knocking balls right to yeah. your foot. So Mickey P. is the first ever player, uh, coach back then, player to to try the product and okay. validate. That it works. So from his word, ultimately, millions of dollars have been raised on this journey, as in from the starting point, the seed. And we all believed in what Mickey had to say. He was very well respected. And the journey started from that point onwards. So we needed to have a truth that yeah. we can work from, right? Gotcha. That's the essence okay. of it. So that's put to bed. Then it was, okay, how do we navigate and try to create the world's best functioning boot? Yeah. How do we do that? Yeah. And like all energies, we're, we're all energies ourselves. We go out there, we put it out there. We were lucky enough to cross paths with a gentleman by the name of Volker Steedle. Now, Volker Steedle was the former head of Adidas Innovation for 20 years. Wow. This guy engineered the Adidas Predator boot, the F50. <laughs> he was part of the team that engineered the 2010 World Cup ball. Ian Thorpe swim shoot. This guy's a guru in the industry. How'd you meet him? How in Indonesia, the 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 hundreds of trips that we had made to Indonesia. And there's a story behind that as well. <laughs> that's, another that's, that's, that's another podcast. That's another podcast. That's another podcast. I think I'll just intervene and say one thing. With with the footy boot, we needed to achieve three things: comfort, function, and aesthetic. Mm -hmm. We've always had the function, but the other two. We're, we had to put our hand up and had to be self-honest. Yeah. We were struggling with a look and, and a comfort. Mm. Yeah. And then obviously the feedback across the journey, different players trying the product, we'd listen. I mean, these guys, players in particular, they're out the cold face, man. If you're not going to listen to the player, where are you getting intel yeah, yeah. from really? Correct. Because right? the other thing is too, you got to balance out an engineer as well who's all set about engineering and he wants the world's best functioning boot, but then he doesn't consider the look of it, for yeah. example. So. Yeah. We gathered intel along the journey, players in particular, listening to our retailers as well. We've got some fantastic retail partners that deal, you know, actually one in particular, ProDirect, the largest online football retailer in the world. That's massive. Their, their staff at Diner give their opinion on, you know, a boot, you know, and these are guys that deal with boots every day. It's they like sell, eBay for boots, right? Well, no, for they, those that don't they know, They sell right? millions of boots every day. Yeah, so yeah. when you ask one of these guys, hey, what are your thoughts on this and that? They're, they're busting it. I think it's fair to, to say, Jakey, we're coachable. Yeah. And I think that in life's journey, I think it's important that you can always be a student and Take a teacher. feedback, right. Yeah, 100%. absolutely. There was no ego on your end when you were getting ego? that feedback. No, that's well, awesome. We're a bunch of Aussie yeah. blokes. That, but, <laughs> but that's why when you talk about those three things that you tick off, the 100% now the boot does tick those three things, right? Like the comfort, the feel, well, the I, look, I, the aesthetic. I, I mean, from, probably our biggest KPI. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, go, yeah, go. Our biggest KPI is um, pro players adopting the product. Yeah. So fair to say now we're, we're – moved into the AFL space because, again, it yeah. helps with every kicking sport, every kicking code. We're based in Australia, so we want to do well in our origin. The idea was born in Australia, mm. so we want to do well in our, our own country. 20-odd AFL players, you know, three, four years ago we had one. Yeah. It was Jake Stringer in the early Shout days. Shout out Jake Stringer for taking, Jakey, taking and a leap forward. <laughs> and let me tell you a story about Jake. <laughs> he wore it all year, the, he, uh, the, the year the Bulldogs won the premiership. He was 20, contracted 2016. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. One player we only had. And he won the <laughs> <won> sure. <laughs> That's <laughs> marketing. <are> the <laughs> let me tell you about Jakey Stringer. On the th Wednesday of before the Saturday grand final, he comes into our office, sees Andy, and says, mate, can you personalise my boots? And Andy goes, of course we can, mate. We'll take it over to the people and we'll do it in an hour. 
Anyway, while he's looking, he sees a pair of boots that he, he hadn't seen before in Concave. He goes, I'll have the, I'll like those ones. And I'm like, Jakey, are you, aren't you going to wear your comfortable slippers that you've been wearing all year? Yeah, you've worn them in. Right. Yeah, he goes, no, 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 I'm I'm happy to, to give these oh, a bill. No, he's a bit crazy. He is absolutely <laughs> crazy. Anyway, on, on the record, his first two kicks were on the full. <laughs> in the grand but final. In the grand final. Nicky, you just hammered oh, Jakey. Yeah, I love Jakey. He's our only ambassador. Yeah. You can't kill him. Well, for those that don't know, putting, putting on a new boot at times, it does take a few sessions to wear in and feel like a glove. So to, to wear a brand new boot on the biggest game of your career is a bold move. Hey, and, and credit to Jakey as well. Uh, obviously, he was strong enough as in he felt, yeah, now I'm happy to try something different. He believed in what we had over the journey as well. He's, he's managed to give us some intel of what, what his thoughts were about the product. And again, that's helped with the evolution of refining the product. But that was, you know, four years ago when he first got involved. We then managed to get maybe a couple more players to today. You know, four years later, we're sitting on 20 players, the likes of Dylan Shield. You know, he's the, he's the pros pro I was yeah. talking about before. Yep. This guy takes his uh, training to the next level. He's always searching for things to get better. Uh, meditation, any, all, anything that can help him get better. He's the ultimate pros pro. Um, t- and for us, that's a great compliment that he would consider our brand to get Definitely. into to Concave. He was, you know, recently he was a pinup boy for one of the other brands. He was an actual pinup boy. Yeah. And to come across, so obviously he believes in our product. There's Jeremy Finlayson who's recently come on board. GWS wow. is about to, to debut in our product uh, coming up shortly. Um, he's been injured of late. Devin Smith, Hugh Greenwood. Jacob Townsend, there's a whole host of players. And not only AFL, we're now finding um, some great interest in the sport of NRL, yeah. which is fantastic. Recently, Ben Hunt, uh, St. George Illawarra captain, has joined, wow, has, has joined uh, the revolution, mate. Yeah, that is massive. <laughs> Again, he's, a Jake, su- he's a superstar in the NRL world, Ben Hunt. Again, a yeah, yeah. another signpost, Jakey, along the p- way. When, when pro players in real time are wearing our product, uh, yeah, we love it. Yeah. Great sign That so, must give you like great satisfaction oh, when hey, those like hey, little milestones of like now we've got now we're almost like managing a group of players from creating a product to <laughs> Correct. We've we've got an organization uh, and, of How do you want to pers- go satisfaction? Yeah. I mean, how do you actually had this someone mentioned something in the office today. Um oh well, you know, we've got there's twenty odd players on the weekend that they're gonna be playing. If you wanna see what our days are like on the weekend, it's Mickey P texting back and forth, <laughs> all the partners texting, Did you see that goal? Did you see what he did? Um it's there's great I mean, from a personal perspective, I Mickey probably the same way. Great satisfaction to go, fuck, man. Like, these guys are rocking our boots. They've just scored a goal in our product. The, there was no logo. There was no nothing. No one ever believed in what we were doing as such. Um, I mean, obviously some people did along the journey, but there was a lot of knockbacks, et cetera. And to see that end product is just amazing, man. Like, the buzz, I mean, you can't beat it. Um, not into drugs. I can only imagine what it feels like. But the euphoric, euphoria we personally get um, from – Watching our product in play is amazing, and I think it's very special. I, I don't know. Like, we follow our boys now. It's like, what team do you follow? And, and, I, and I think now, Jake, it is important that as a company and a business that we represent ourselves ethically, and we can build our own family and our own club with our product. Yeah, yeah. And and, and that that Have can that be special. Family feel right. Yeah, and we want to do business the right way. We want to we want to do everything the right way, and I think that's the experience of of being in teams. Maybe. Andy and myself, our whole, yeah, our whole and, life. And also, Neo, Neo Andrew Nefitu, again, who, who's not here today, he, he's been in the sports management world, you know, in the early days with Ricky Nixon. He, he helped set that up and he represents Shane Warne. And I mean, there's some great intel in general in the Congave office yeah. um, that re, that derives around ultimately trying to get the best out of our players, et cetera. So we understand the challenges a lot of players have. I've been lucky enough too to live with a player as such. Uh, Michael Theoklitos, uh, who's a goalkeeper. And yeah, so yeah. there was a lot of things along the journey that helped us and ultimately probably groomed us in a lot of ways to be doing what we're doing. Because you mentioned there before, Andy, of of like the brand originating in Australia. <clears throat> and obviously you, you started predominantly from the round ball world. That's where you, a mm. lot of your sort of personnel that you're working with and feedback came from. But you've mentioned now expanding into other areas, other sports, AFL, NRL, but not just from an Australian standpoint. I mean, you guys, you you were living in the UK. You've, you've spent time, a number of hours and months in Asia to expand the brand and the football boot. How, like what, what's that journey been? And I guess, how have you strategized to make that happen? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, obviously um, it's important that we, we, our product, we, 
we basically reach all parts of the world. I mean, that's the end game. We we want our brand to be a global brand. known as a truly global brand. So um, the round ball code is amazingly significant and, and large in numbers, 243 million registered players according to FIFA. Mm. And FIFA envisaged that a billion people participate in the sport. So I suppose... And 200 what, odd countries play yeah. football. So that, that's that's ultimately, yeah, that's a character. The market's we, we there. Be a it's part a huge of it, market, And it's right? a big enough market. Uh, so annually 100 million pairs of boots are sold globally. So that's the market. Place we're playing against. So it's wow. a lot. Yeah. We only need a few percent. Mickey, yeah, I was going to say, what you take? I'll be helicoptering in next time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> the so, traffic was terrible well, I thought, today, mate. I thought you were today because you were late. So. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, meanwhile, just here, meanwhile mate. we're scrounging for two bucks <laughs> to put in the meter to bloody yeah. we don't get a fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically, having said that, obviously you need retailers. Um, that can help you go to market and that have enough bandwidth to get it out there. One retailer in particular that we're proud of being involved with is the retailer, and I touched on it before, in Pro Direct Soccer. So Pro Direct Soccer are the largest online football retailer in the world. Mm. And they're based out of a little place in England called Devon. Devon. So Devon. Uh, Adrian Lake, the owner, and, 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 and his executive staff basically – bought into um, the concave story because, in essence, they've got a similar story. They started off as a catalogue book that would supply – sorry, they started off as a small retail store that would supply boots for pro players and then they they changed their model to a sort of catalogue book. Mm. And then – so they'd send out catalogues to all the pros. Hey, have a look at the Copa Mondial. Have a look at the Nike. Yeah they were finding that a lot of the pro players were like, oh, wow, I can get access to this stock. They then moved their model to the online space. So this was online before. That's a game changer when that happened. This was like, in all honesty, it's probably about 15, 20 years ago for yeah. them as well. Okay. So it was early stages, so early adopter. Yep. So he, Adrian Lake, found parallels with us, sees a couple of bun bunch of Aussie blokes coming down here with their boots in their bag, goes, look, I don't think the product's that good, but I love your spirit. I love what you're trying to do. <laughs> Let's, let's start something. And wow. again, when you said, how do you gain intel to get better? These are the types of guys that help us get better. But within that, even within that, within ProDirect, you're going into a, a machine, you're going into a company that first and foremost, they're the best at what they do. So these guys are in the zone. Now, how does a little brand like Concave get attention in this place that basically is run by Nike and Addy? Like... They're their biggest customers. Let's let's be honest. They're their biggest customers. So in a, in a sense, it was just difficult um, just to even get in there and keep their attention span up. But one of the biggest ways uh, we navigated um, through the challenges that presented were give everyone some mind share, man. What's your thoughts? You know, mm. like rather than a brand that goes in there, <clears throat> Nike yeah. man with the collars up. <laughs> yeah, we I'm know the what's man. best. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. man, how do we get better? Can you please help us? Go in there with humility. Go in there being honest. And, and give them a bit of ownership. That's a, great, that's, that's a great lesson for anything in business, right? Oh, or in anything in life. It, it is, Jakey, 100%. Give, yeah. give people ownership. Give them of what you're doing. Yeah. Or yeah. give them their space. And Andy's probably been a master at it. Yeah. And hence they've taken ownership and they feel part of our brand. Yeah. And, we're, we're, again, we're honoured. And we're, some of the – We've been very lucky. Yeah, some yeah. of the intel – uh, we've had yeah, just in awesome. general. I've actually captured that with you two a lot because even when I wore the wore the boot, and I probably started wearing them when I stopped playing professional football, which was like 2016, I think, Mickey, when we were at Richmond. Yeah. And I remember Mickey even asking me like, "How is it?" And I'm like, Mate, "Why are you wearing what I think? I'm no. playing in that. I'm playing in the low." He's, but like the, the passion and the genuine care <laughs> of like, is it good? What What do you think? You and and, and it's the same. And I actually think that's a big reason of why you guys are wear today, which will. We'll tap into, and you've already tapped into Andy of like the foundation of clientele you have, and more for where the vision of the brand's going. But that openness of almost like a vulnerability with your product of we know we're not the best, but we envision that we are going to be one day. What can you give us to get that? I think it's a great tool for anything, you know, anyone in business. Because I did promote today's episode as like a, a different angle on the sporting world and a business angle, and this yeah. is this is some of the way to think about it, um, which is really interesting. Yeah, we've been uh, very lucky. We, you know what? When you when you get down in the dumps with doing what we're doing, you you, you keep getting punched up, etc. What you find yourself doing is you get energy from the next guy that 
you know, you show the product to, or they give you something like you, mm. they'll say something that's positive about the product. And it's just that little bit that you go, Oh yeah, fuck yeah. That's why I'm doing this again. This yeah. is why we've got to keep doing what we're doing. I mean, yeah, to, to the point that thanks for having us, Jakey, because yeah, we're, like, we're, we're happy to talk yeah. about it. <laughs> no, 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 but, but it actually, podcast we've ever done. I've no, never done there one. You go. It's true. Breaking all records here. <laughs> no, so, fantastic. No, but we're, we're, anyone that's willing to listen, Mickey, what do yeah, you say? Have yeah. boots. We'll travel. We'll travel. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Hey, come on, come on guys. The cliches are out now, but not, 20% of life is turning up. Yeah. But yeah, you got to yeah. love what you do and and there's you know that's what we have done. Yeah. And and the the sincere belief that we're offering a real technology uh mightn't be for everybody, yeah. but it can compete in the marketplace with all the other big brands and we feel comfortable in that space yeah. and we'll continue to drive it and and gain mind share market share. Absolutely. H- have you guys ever in that 20 year journey cuz it Obviously, I'm sure it's still a roller coaster putting flames out and running a business, and and I'd love to get a bit more understanding of the day to day operation. But I mean, have you guys across that period ever sort of down tools and thought, you know, this might not be for us. This we're at a point here where I don't know how we're going to keep operating. Is that is that still a couple ongoing? of days I couldn't get out of bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to pay the bills, but yeah. you know what? You can't take things too serious either. Yeah, you know, you, your energy and your frequency has to be up. And if it is, you'll you'll actually find someone. You'll navigate a way. Nothing is ever that serious that you can't find a way out. And mm-hmm. I genuinely believe that. Yeah. And we're probably testimony to that because I think we have hung on the cliff a few times. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, you just that that's life. But I can relate that to sport because yeah, it's, it's the like deeper anything. you go into a tournament, the deeper you go to a final, there's still no guarantees. Yeah. So you got to get it on the line. Yeah, yeah. you got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Well, you got yeah, or <laughs> yeah, you got to yeah, treat yeah. the two evils, winning and losing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to treat them the same. Yeah, and if you do, eventually your number will come up because yeah. you've turned up enough times. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> your number will come up. I think well, you've used the analogy: if you go all in in poker every time, yeah. you're going to at least win one you, of those yeah. all in. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 the best <laughs> analogy is even a broken clock is right twice a day. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the old time. Mickey P's on. He's, turned, P's up, he's turned up late and he's brought some atmosphere <laughs> finally. <laughs> Thank you, Mickey, for turning up. Jeez. But so some of some of those areas as well, from like um like when we're talking about navigating strategy through the good times and the bad times, like I mean, is that coming from you two? Are you guys working with other people? Do you have business mentors in this space as well? Because it's a unique field to get really expertise on, right? It's a combination of both because what was a business model 10, 15 years ago, say that Julius Coleman when he was in business, Andy Bassett with their unique business is slightly different to ours. We, we've we've had trial and error that everybody as a group thought, yep, yeah, Andy goes over to England, uh, we'll kick it. And we didn't. And we've had to refine it and say, right, we might have to go to a licensing model. Yeah. So we, we kind of take a, a you know, slightly different approach. Yeah, and we're, we're always adapting. I mean, every business does. I mean, just look at what COVID's done to businesses in general over the last year and a half. Like if you don't adapt, you, you're done, like you, mm. you're gone. Um, for us, it's just, yeah, staying afloat, doing what we're doing. Yeah. and uh, So little tweaks here and there, Jake. Yeah. There's no just set move formula. It, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I can, I can certainly say in the last few months oh, – a few months, six months, we've signed a few licensing deals, which seem to be working quite well. Okay. And what that means is the people have seen the product, they, they're energised, they know their markets. So Indonesia, yeah. Japan, uh, I think Mexico is yeah. about to come on. And we, we, we kind of pity back off them and they're happy to put their energy right. and resources. Yeah, so and we, we go take... into new territories, which ultimately have great resource that can, can run run concave within their territories. I think you'll probably find in actually in the first stages of Nike uh, coming to Australia, they actually licensed the brand into Australia. Wow. And then after 10 odd years- I think they, they were pity backing on ASICs at the mm-hmm. time. Right. So you kind of give some ownership to resourcing a business in a country for them to do more reach because you don't have- oh, of yeah, like a way to scale. And, 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 and that's the other thing. How, and now exposure is min- minimal. Yeah. So then they get the pro players. And, and okay. They get a bigger piece of it. We we get our guaranteed royalties and, and, yep, yep, yep. and upfront- but licensee not, fees? Not only that, you obviously you get expertise from the locals. You go into a Chinese market, you don't know uh, how to navigate, you know, the ins and outs. You don't know culturally some of the differences they might have or yeah. you don't know their buying patterns, for example, their consumer habits. Right. So 
people that live there predominantly know they know their territory They've better got than anyone right. else. So yeah, but we're, we're proud to obviously, and Mickey touched on it. Um, one group in particular, I mean, the AFL's major sponsor, Toyota, the Toyota Tusho group licensed Concave into Japan. Now to get into the Japanese market, it had taken us three years. So they did do, their due diligence process was three years before we got into the Japan market. And uh, now they're going on to close to 10 stores. So wow. they, only, they only started end of 2020. And they're already in. And they're going into 10 odd stores. And we're moving and, into and April 2021. So, so we're going to, yeah, but um, that was a great milestone for us as a brand to, to get into a market that's so astute. Um, you know, the Japanese are very uh, anal for the right reasons. Mm. Um, you know, they're very thorough. They're very, so you know, when you do get in, you earned that. You did, yeah. They didn't just gift it to you. And, you know, a due diligence process of three years, is, it's a long time just for a licensing yeah. agreement. So that's one one. When they've put area. together their apparel kit, the materials are top shelf, like yeah. equal to Nike, Addy, without yeah. a doubt. We've, no, we've, they've got their own sort of, yeah, obviously it's under guidance, the guidance of Concave, um, the mothership, uh, you know, approvals and stuff and that, but they do things really well. And I suppose that's the biggest thing for us to do something well and to, to do it justice. To do I've got, it, I've got to say, I was quite excited about our Indonesian partners because they've set up concept stores, Jakey. So our whole store, like Chatty Shopping Centre, the equivalent, has has got a concave concept store in there wow. with all apparels. So there's uh, three three concept stores in, in Indonesia. Yeah, where they've actually got kicking areas. Yeah. I mean, it's really exciting. I mean, last year, 2020, was a crazy year for, for everyone in any walk of life. But as a business and a, and a business standpoint of where concave was at, I mean, how did you guys approach, you know, navigate yourself through the pandemic? Probably like most people, <laughs> minute to minute, second to second. But ironically, there were pros and cons with the situation. Pros being that big brands were handicapped mm. and that we almost brought them down into the swamp with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but <laughs> well, what we found was that their, their stuff wasn't getting anywhere and choosing concave was an option. And Andy will tell you, we had plenty of requests from agents to uh, to to give yeah, Concave I mean, a try. Yeah, let's be honest. Most most businesses are going to be refining uh, their marketing spends. Um, they're going to be uh, looking to to cut the dollars. So a lot of players that were previously probably sponsored by major brands, other brands, um, won't have that luxury anymore. And yeah, again, we're going to be a consideration. But equal to that, our products more than ready. Um, and it's, uh, yeah. And, really... and ironically, our sales went up in certain places, particularly Pro Direct. And, and yeah. we, we don't quite know how or why, yeah. but every time we check the figures, we go, oh, Jesus, that's gone up. And yeah, I mean, that it was yeah. an anomaly that we still don't yeah. understand. Yeah, it was uh, challenging. I mean, it, it was challenging different parts, in particular Victoria. We were, we were hurt the most as in shutdown. Of so course, so yeah. the little Johnny couldn't go to the park. If he's not going <laughs> to the park, his mum and dad aren't thinking about buying football boots because he's not allowed to go to the park. Yeah. But in other territories, other nations, in particular at that time, England was quite loose about the COVID protocol. Yeah. They didn't have lockdown. So, yeah, their outlet was let's go to the park, mate, to forget about this Play COVID. Football, right? yeah. So numbers in particular, Europe, UK, w had gone up. You know, yeah. Victoria, not really. Um, and then again with the resurgence of, of – of, kids being able to play football again, again, it spikes, sales spike again. There's an enthusiasm, yeah. you know, you only yeah. got to watch the AFL and see that the passion and the roar from the supporters now, because we were so suppressed yeah. for a year of no sport to yeah. get out and go watch your team and barrack for your team. Yeah. You can feel this energy just through the TV. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, I think one thing you can say, no matter what demographic you fit into, I think a parent will always buy their kid a pair of soccer boots, yeah, or football, football boots, boots at some yeah. point. You know, yeah. Yeah. other things 100%. might, other things might go am amiss. You know, the technology stuff and the Game Boy, but I think a pair of boots is always kind of on the radar. Yeah, yeah, at some point, right? Yeah. yeah. So for for you guys, I mean, the I guess the bit of around uh, actually one thing I sorry I wanted to touch on was the marketing aspect of your business. I I actually find a lot of the stuff you guys do really cool and really creative. And as I said, the mantra of going against the grain and being quite unique, I think is actually infiltrated into your marketing. I know you're broadening out into also now some apparel and more clothing stuff as well to complement the boot range. But I mean, how do you, obviously marketing in your position is a big part of your business, sales of the boot product, as well as allocating resources and personnel to, to wear the product from a professional standpoint. How have you guys focused energy into that space? 
to, to grow it, really. Yeah, again, um, over the years, we've managed to attract probably like-minded people as such. So, you know, that energy thing we've mentioned quite a few times. It's mm. real. There's people. I mean, and it's, electric, hey, you're, it's you're, electric in here at the moment. Well, <laughs> mate, you're a living proof of one of those energies um, crossing paths of the brand. You Definitely. resonated with something to do with the brand. So luckily enough, over the period of time, we've managed to cross paths with some talented people, uh, you know, artists. Uh, we've collaborated with artists, um, street mural artists. We've collaborated with a guy called From Virginia Ben. This guy does uh, personalised um, artistry on shoes for Beyonce and and all these uh, you know, music artists, etc. But we've attracted the likes of these people, um, and they've contributed to obviously our branding. Um, work with a fantastic artist. A designer out of the UK um, who's who's really got his hand on the pulse. And what do artists go by? They go by energy. So they go by how we talk to them. We, they go by the brief um, and then they just get on with it. But again, probably one of our biggest strengths is what Mickey P mentioned before is giving them ownership. Mm. We already believe in you, man. We know you're a talented artist. Go show us. Go do what you do. Wow. So you give some the creative freedom to Absolutely. the personnel. Uh, yeah. One point. Uh, Jakey, is uh, when the players come in to get their kit, the pro players, Andy says, listen, man, if you, if you see something you like, a hoodie or a design that you might like, feel free. There's never a bad idea when you walk in a concave. We're not saying it's going to – we're not going to bring it to life, but we love to hear it. And I, th I think it's a great, great one that could be coming up in the next couple of months is the dream time. Okay. Uh, a, a player down at Gold Coast, uh, Jay Farrah and Andy Kickett, uh, his uncle, they've collaborated in doing the very first commercial Aboriginal uh, artist on like, a boot. Like influence, Aboriginal art influence Absolutely. on a boot. Absolutely. Wow. I'll, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's come up. It's still work in progress, but the boys are Watch buzzing. Watch this space. Watch this space. Mate, that's exciting. We'll keep an eye out. When's that game? In three three weeks, two early, weeks? Early June. Uh, oh, so it's a few months yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, oh, a couple okay. of months yeah. ago. Oh, so mate, that's that's a, but that mind share piece yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone's got mind Everyone's share. got that's the mind share. Concave. Yeah. Everyone's welcome, mate. Jeez, that would be a bit of a thrill as a player. I've already got some creative look, freedom on the brand. <laughs> look, we, we say, right, the number one thing they've got to do is get a kick and their football is their most important thing on the pitch. At the same time, it can be a little bit... Uh, uh, what, an outlet? What, it's an outlet for players because it's a little bit regimented being a pro player at times. Definitely, and, definitely. But we understand all players are different. Andy's like, mate, you want to come in, have some lunch, hang out, do something, great, you're welcome. If not, we understand it. So as little or as much as you like. Yeah. We kind of leave the door open. And consequently, yeah. some players enjoy it. it. They come in they and, love it. you know, shoot the breeze and, and have a laugh and, and also inspire some of the kit. Mm. And, and now we've brought to life a, a boot that we're going to be quite proud of. Yeah. Where, where for, for you guys – because you, uh, you guys have a lot of strategy and I think what's really powerful with you guys is very clear of what you want to achieve, which obviously helps you get to that goal. But the end goal of Concave, I mean... Yeah, to be a household brand name globally. globally. <laughs> Where's that gone? <laughs> that, that's, that was the end game. No, the, a combo actually, definitely that. We, we wanted to add to the... To, we wanted to serve people and it happens to be football. And we want to be, make a difference, even if it's to a young girl who struggles to get a kick, puts on a pair of boots and actually kicks it slightly better or finds that sweet spot. Or juggles the ball. Or juggles the ball, having trouble. Because the truth is not everybody is a good kick of, of the football, soccer ball. We were very aware of that, that it's for everybody. And if it can help your game, albeit minimal and slightly, it doesn't get you a kick. It's not a remote control, yeah. the concave. But it, it's certainly a bit – I mean, we, we've mentioned the analogies of the golf club and the tennis racket. Those areas, sweet spots, got bigger, which in, improved everybody's game. Yep. Professionals right through to, to weekend warriors. Yep. So yep. that was our intention. With that comes being a global household name. That's awesome. Adidas, Nike, Concave. It's pretty Why cool. But one thing with the, the mentality you guys have as well as you transition to the good and bad of business, do you guys have any advice for people in not necessarily trying to start apparel brands to go after the Adidas and Nikes, but starting out in a, from a business standpoint in sport who are, who are finding it tough? I mean, what's sort of your advice you can give them as I'm sure you've been through a lot of, a lot of times yourself? Oh, gee. Hang in there. Hang in. <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up. Buckle up. Belief. Yeah, really but, uh, dig deep. Believe, believe in what I you're doing. I don't think there's yeah. a magic wand. There's not a magic formula. Uh, you know what? Sometimes 
you do have to put up the white flag in life. Mm. We just felt that we we decided that we do have a, a unique technology that if we can perfect, we're going to go for it. And yeah. we're still going for it. And there's still no guarantees. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, I mean, it, there is, this is definitely an old cliche. Enjoy the journey. Yeah. Win or lose. Just have a bit of fun with everything. And if that's what you've chosen to do, then give it everything. Mm. And if you can't give it everything, then you can put up the white flag. I think that's something great you said before. 90% of life is turning up, showing up. And that's definitely the, the heat of battle here. And you two mm. guys, um, you know, as I, as I want to sort of round out the episode, you two guys are people that I actually look up to. Andy, from, oh. from a business standpoint, like mm. honestly, man, what you're doing is, is really unbelievable. And I think the market share you guys are going to reach in this country is only going to grow. And Mickey, you actually the reason why I played football again. I don't know if I've told you this, but mm. I've told a lot of people. I, I retired. I was mm. dead and gone with football. I didn't want to play anymore. Came out of the year of the pros, played in the MPL, the, the VFL of soccer in Victoria and just hated it. Um, and then Mickey got on the phone to me. He was having a, having a beer at his next door neighbors. So he was actually my dad's best mate. Oh yeah. And my dad's walked I in and gone. He, he was there at your birth. Yeah. yeah, your, yeah. your dad so walked out actually, of the room. It's a true Squizzy. story. Shout out Squizzy who liked this. Squizzy, my dad's best friend was actually, uh, entered the room where my mum was in labor and, and she was crowning having wow. me as a kid and beat my dad in there. And so he was the first one in and then he kind of gone, dad, no. But, um, anyway, no, my dad called me that day and goes, oh, I've got someone I want you to speak to. I'm like, oh, who's like, oh, I just had a beer at Squizzy's and met a soccer legend. I'm like, well, I'm squizzy hanging around. Squizzy's he's not hanging around with soccer legends. Anyway, and anyway, I spoke to Mickey P and Mickey P said, mate, um, I'm coaching down at one of these clubs. I'm a part of the coaching team. It's nothing serious, but just come down and just have a kick. Like no strings attached. Forget money, forget like anything else. Just come and enjoy the game. And ever since then, I, I've connected back with football. So I do owe you a lot. And that's one of the reasons why it's the brand sentimental to me as well. So. Fantastic. Um, yeah, no, thanks a lot, Jay. And thanks obviously for having us, mate. We're we we love it, mate. Pleasure, guys. Get on the get into the concave scores. Check out the boots. Concave.com. Uh, check out yeah, concave.com. Check out the gear. Um, there's a lot of new range coming, and it's just going to keep growing, mate. It's it's an awesome time to be alive. In this Our world. latest campaign, play rogue, play rogue. <laughs> there you go. Let's play it, rogue boys. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Thanks fellas. Jake. Awesome. Thanks, Jake. Thank you.